Welcome back everyone. For those who aren't in the loop, I am building a sonoluminescent fusion reactor. This uses water and an acoustic standing wave to generate sonoluminescence that will crush a hydrogen loaded nickel lattice or a deuterium loaded palladium lattice and hopefully get some fusion in that metal lattice. A couple interesting things. This Lenner topic is super controversial. Like there's so many people who are like, oh, you can't achieve fusion, blah, blah, blah. You know what? I don't care. I'm pursuing this from an empirical approach. So as an engineer, I just want to say, hey, I have heard some things about how there's anomalous heating in these metal lattices. And if I go ahead and make the temperature and pressure even much higher than those tests, maybe I'll see some anomalous heating. Look, I simply don't know if it's DD fusion, lattice fusion, muon catalyzed fusion. I just don't know. And I'm not going to burn what's left of my life trying to zero in on one of those. I want the effects in the aggregate because that's how we're going to get steam. So I want to just simply get this thing working and do data sweeps and see what pans out in the data. So an empirical approach. What I'm not doing is tunnel visioning and saying, here's what I think will happen. Here's the math that proves that happens. And then go through all this work and find out that it was proven wrong, but we may still have gotten some anomalous heating. To me, that would be like some weird combination of a failure and a win. I simply want the empirical data because if we generate excess heat, we can generate steam potentially. We could generate power and have more power than we put into this system. That's the goal. If we see anomalous heating in the data, what we can do is we can ferret out the causes and the recipe of that anomalous heating just simply empirically and get that excess heat higher and higher and higher until we can't get it any higher. And hopefully that's a point where we can generate some steam and generate power with a small permanent magnet generator. If that's the case and we generate steam and we can generate power from permanent magnet generator, a few things are in our favor here, right? We don't have, in the case of a vacuum system, we don't have a rougher pump, which is a power hog. We don't have a turbo molecular pump, which is another power hog. We don't have like some crazy detector setup, which is more power hogs with other instrumentation. No, what we have is a couple hundred watts here going into this little tiny acoustic generator on both sides and some sensors are low power and Raspberry Pi. So let's say a couple hundred watts, that's all we have to overcome to get net energy output. So it's feasible right out of the gates that this setup could have more power coming out than you put in, in terms of steam and energy generation. So this is a very interesting way to approach a home fusion generator, right? It's also inherently safe because those neutrons are already emanating from a point inside of a shield, inside of a sphere of water with moderators in it. If those neutrons get out of there, then there's another shield, which is the borax shield outside. And then ideally you would sink this into the ground with a few inches of concrete. You have earth around it and it would be very, very safe. That's the vision for this thing. If we do succeed in generating more power than we put in. One more point on intrinsic inherent safety, right? This reaction that's happening in there is based on sonoluminescence, which has to happen inside of a sphere of water. So if the acoustic wave dies or gets unstable, you will lose your sonoluminescence, right? So inherent safety. You might say, but Jason, what happens if the steam builds up inside the sphere and it just does that, right? Um, well, not a huge deal, right? We have a pop-off valve at like 250 or 300 PSI, and then we have a thin-walled reactor chamber that only has, you know, a 20 centimeter or so sphere of hot water that will pop. The steam loop is actually going to be external to that sphere of water and there's not going to be a lot of water in that loop. So if that goes pop, uh, you know, another little safety valve pops off. And by decentralizing this sort of power grid fusion thing, if you think about it, if you have like a 30 kilowatt generator at your home and it's sunk underground in concrete, no neutrons coming out. And if it does pop, it's just going to be contained in that little sarcophagus. It doesn't seem like a huge deal. It's not like you have some megawatt scale centralized power plant that melts down with God knows what happening to the local community. This would be like a localized event that would not hurt anybody and it would be on your own property self-contained and there wouldn't be any radioactivity to clean up. This would just be like literally water and a nickel colloid Nothing dangerous there if it were to fail. I guess while you watch me put the rest of this thing together for the remainder of this video, I'll just explain who I am. My name's Jason Koher. I'm an electrical engineer, started my career doing firmware, microcontrollers, 
turn into machining stuff, doing enclosures for those electronics. Oh man, do you guys know how many of these box builds I've done? Um, I've lost count, okay? If you need something that's like a prototype of a box for a test fixture with a micro in it and a bunch of sensors, DIN rail stuff, um, shoot me a message. I do these all the time, I can help you. Turned into small mechanisms, turned into water carbonation and fluids, systems, designs, sensors. And you know, 20 years in, now we're doing fusion reactors, I guess. <laughs> but really um, doing videos on my channel is so much fun. And what I love about it is I meet the most interesting people. All of you who comment, give your little thoughts and ideas or contact me privately, there's some amazing people out there in this community. So it seems like it's the most interesting people that accrete together and we end up solving stuff. So this is open source so that those types of people can coalesce around a project like this and we will be the ones who advance technology, not some government funded secret. Well, on that note, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, all the things. I'll really appreciate it. And stay tuned for the next one. Hopefully we get this unit running pretty soon, right? Adios.